Well, the reason they couldn't mention stars or take photographs of stars is that the astronomy buffs at Vanderbilt or Harvard or UCSC would have found the errors instantly. Right. Do you want me to mention him by name? I think so. Okay, why not? Yeah. <clears throat> of course, Lee is kind of a reclusive person, but I don't mind mentioning his name. We can. can't live forever. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Ready? Yeah. James Irwin was the command pilot on Apollo 13, on a, pardon me, on Apollo 15. Uh, James, after his return from the moon, became a born-again Christian. At one point, he came to Nashville, Tennessee, to give a lecture on Christianity and his conversion there, too. And at that time, he met a local Nashville resident by the name of Lee Galvani. Well, Lee implored James Irwin to confess, to tell the truth about the Apollo hoax of which Lee was convinced. Well, evidently, he made some inroads in, into Jim Irwin's conscience because in August of 1991, James Irwin called me at my home. And he said, I understand you've written a, a, a book called We Never Went to the Moon. He says, come to think of it, this phone could be tapped. He says, I want you to call me at my home on Friday in in uh, in uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. So I said, okay, Jim, I'll call you. And he gave me his home phone number. Well, when I called him on Friday, James Irwin was dead. He had died of a heart attack. Uh, tell me about the pilot who uh, phoned in one of your uh, guest appearances on the talk radio program. Oh, while I was on a radio show concerning Apollo, an airline pilot called me and he said, Bill, I think you're right, because while I was traveling from San Francisco to Tokyo, we saw a C-5A drop a capsule out of its cargo hold. The orange, three orange paras parachutes opened, and it descended toward the ocean. And even though we were traveling at about 550 knots, we followed this descent as long as we could. Uh, when the command capsule returns to Earth, the atmosphere causes it to become red hot due to friction at high speed. Well, when a command capsule strikes an ocean, which is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, this red-hot capsule should have turned a large volume of seawater into steam instantly, just like when you pour water into a hot pot on the stove, it immediately, it's called flashing into steam. But in all of the photographs showing the capsule hitting the water, there's no indication whatsoever of any steam, of any indication that the capsule was really red-hot. On December 7th, 1975, I was invited to discuss my book at radio station KOME in San Jose, California. The moderator or talk show host was Victor Bach. About halfway through the broadcast, the engineer came into the control room, or the room where we were giving our, uh, our information, and he said, we're off the air. Subsequent in, uh, subsequent investigation indicated that someone in a helicopter had dropped napalm on the KOME transmitter in the Gilroy Hills, causing a quarter of a million dollars worth of damage and effectively cutting off the station from the air for three days. Well, police came to the station and offered us police protection because callers into the station said, what happened to you? You had this fellow on about we never went to the moon and suddenly your radio station goes off the air. So to me, this was the first real life indication that there was somebody that didn't want me to tell this story.